Tony is the uh, central character, and she sees ghosts and so helps them solve problems, crimes often. And her love interest is a medical herbalist called Maya. And the other character you need to know for this short scene is Deirdre, who is her uh, Tony's spirit guide, and she's a drag queen who died in the 1980s and wears 1980s outfits often. So at the point that I'm going to read to you, Tony and Deirdre have been visiting a ghost in hospital, well, visiting a, a live person in hospital associated with a ghost. They just solved something there, and Maya is coincidentally <coughs> visiting the hospital. Outside the main entrance, Deirdre stopped in front of Tony. You can't take diazepam. You have public responsibilities now, she said sharply, straightening her pencil skirt and tugging at her black seamed tights so that the lines at the back of her legs ran vaguely in a line. Tony walked off to the side, away from the bustle of patients, visitors and medics. Are the ghosts, are ghosts the public? They're not very public, are they? I think it'd be more ac accurate to refer to ghosts as the private, she wondered. Anyway, what am I supposed to do if it all gets to be too much? I have a life, you know, and work and friends. You have work and maybe one friend, but you hardly have a life. Possibly you have a half-life, but that's stretching it. And what you do is to use me to channel the others. That's my job. You weren't there, Tony pointed out. For five minutes? For five days? I'm a ghost, it's all the same, Deirdre said unhelpfully. Tony's gut churned. Something was going to fall. Somebody she cared about was going to get hurt, crushed beneath bricks and wood and metal bars. She tore her head round to see Maya, about 50 metres away, standing under a building covered with scaffolding. Fear knifing through her body, she took off towards her. Maya strolled through the entrance to outpatients towards the car park, stopping short at the sight of Tony. She was standing near the door to the main hospital, talking to somebody out of view around the corner. Pulse racing, Maya decided she was going to go over and ask Tony out to dinner. Maybe it wasn't sensible to see someone who made her heart beat as hard as a hammer, but Maya was done with being sensible. Life is short, she reminded herself. Maya ground to a halt in front of a building, having construction work done on it. She could see around the corner now, and although Tony was speaking out loud, there was nobody with her. Tony's hair was so short, Maya could be sure she wasn't wearing a, a headset. Tony was talking to herself. Maya's heart sank, realising why she was so attracted to Tony. Damn it! Once again, Maya was on the brink of falling for someone with serious issues, probably <laughs> mental health issues. <laughs> she watched Tony talking to herself in public for a few minutes, willing the image to imprint on her brain and replace the fantasy of Tony dropping her clothes to the floor and sliding into bed with her. Out of nowhere, a gust of wind blew in so furiously, Maya heard the scaffolding above her head shift and creak. The wind was weird. It was like a mini cyclone centered around her. Tony was suddenly running hell for leather in her direction. Maya tried to move as dust and debris showered down, but she was rooted to the spot. Invisible hands had hold of her ankles, and though she felt the heavy steel scaffold begin to sway, she couldn't move. Tony bounded across the path straight for her, her face full of concern. Maya was pulled into her arms and thrown to the ground. Tony's body pressed hard into hers as the scaffold collapsed with a roar all around them. <laughs>